Good evening, and we welcome you to this longest night service. Before I begin, I have just a few minor housekeeping items I'd like to mention. Uh, if you didn't get one, there are electric candles at the back of the sanctuary in a basket as you came in. Um, just please go ahead and grab one if you didn't get one already. And I'm sure that you all got a bulletin, and everything you will need for this service is found in the bulletin, hymn lyrics and responsive prayers. Uh, if you don't wish to keep your bulletin after the service, there's a recycling bin over there. You can drop it off at the back of the sanctuary on your way out. If you do need to use the washrooms during the service, please access them using the door behind the choir loft on my left and your right, just right over here. Uh, you go through the door, make an immediate right, and they're straight in front of you. Free will offerings may be left in the plate at the back of the sanctuary and the door where you came in on your way out. These offerings will be given in support of palliative care services at Brockville General Hospital. If you or your family would like to attend worship on Christmas Eve as well, our family service is at 4.30, and our service of lessons and carols is at 7 p.m., and everyone is welcome. This is the season of darkness, of the longest nights of the year. For those for whom night time means heightened loneliness or fear, this is the time most dreaded, the time when hope is most needed. This is especially true this year as we consider the pain and suffering being endured by so many people in so many places around the world, places that are longing for lasting peace. Many of us tonight are reminded by the very nature of the Christmas season of those who are absent from our family circles. I'm thinking especially of those who have lost a loved one to death, whether recently or some time ago. I'm also thinking of those who, from whom we are separated under various circumstances. Others are burdened by illness or disappointment or worry. And so we have come together this evening seeking comfort and strength from each other and from God. Now I invite you to join with me in the call to worship, which is in your bulletin. We'll read it responsively. Tonight we gather here in this place of refuge, for we are lost, we are lonely, we are afraid. Tonight we gather daring to wonder if God has indeed come in Jesus, discerning the rejection we have known, familiar with our failed relationships, holding our heartache in hands of tenderness. Tonight we gather with neighbors and strangers, a family made one by our brokenness, coming with our hearts full of hope and our heads filled with doubts. Tonight we gather just as we are, for God has promised to meet us here and to welcome us for who we are. Our first hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, I'd encourage you to, which is in your order of service, I'd encourage you to remain seated as we sing our hymns tonight. <laughs>
now I invite you to join with me in the opening prayer, which you'll find in your order of service. We'll read it responsibly. Holy God of Advent, you became weak, so we would find strength in moments of heartbreak. You left the safety of heaven to wander the wilderness of the world, holding our hands when we feel hopeless. You set aside your glory to hold our pain so we might be healed, even when there seems to be no hope. You became one of us, so we would never be alone in any moment, in any circumstance. So come now, child of Bethlehem, to strengthen us in these days. And then we will continue with the prayer of lament. All around us are the sights and sounds of Christmas, gentle God. The laughter of parties, the songs of carolers, the shouts of children sledding down hills, the music in every store. But deep within us, we carry our pain. Our grief walks with us every step we take. Loneliness is a shawl we drape over our shoulders on empty nights. So in this time, when every night stretches into eternity, we come to you bringing our gifts, not gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but grief, bitterness, and loss. We have come from different backgrounds, from different families, from different faith traditions. But we have all lived in the land of shame and wandered the far country of despair. In a season where so many people don't have enough hours in a day to get their lists checked off, their cards mailed, their presents wrapped, we have all the time in the world to remember the loss that has stolen the joy of the season, to grieve over a job, a dream, a loved one, to sit in the shadows of our homes, too weary to turn on the lights, to wander the streets lit by lights on all the houses, but not by the light of the world. Our fear of the future, our remembrance of the past, our pain that is difficult to bear and harder to release, our emptiness which cannot be filled with platitudes, our hands which cannot hold the ones we wish to embrace. All this makes a season of long nights. Be with us in our loneliness, in our longing, in our loss, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is In the Bleak Midwinter. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. Our first reading tonight is taken from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 5. 
Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and every hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The responsive psalm is Psalm 121, verses 1 to 8. It is printed in the bulletin, and we will read it responsively. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Our second scripture reading comes from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives life to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. May the message that God has to give to you tonight, may it come through me or if need be in spite of me, for Jesus' sake. Amen. As we gather on this longest night, we are met with the darkness that envelops the world around us. The nights are longer, the days are shorter, and the cold seems to penetrate our very souls. In the midst of this darkness, we turn to the scriptures to find comfort and hope. Our first reading from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 5, speaks to us of a divine promise. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. 
Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. In these words, we find solace in the assurance that God sees our struggles, knows our pain, knows the pain and suffering of those around us, and offers us comfort. Isaiah paints a beautiful picture of a God who comes to us with gentleness, offering peace to our troubled hearts amid hardship and pain. In the quiet stillness of this place, you may find yourself standing on the precipice of darkness, yearning for that first light to pierce through the shadows that envelop our souls and indeed envelop our world. The longest night is a night that stretches our faith, tests our endurance, and calls us to confront the barren landscapes of our lives. But Psalm 121, which we read responsibly, reminds us on this longest night that we can lift up our eyes and know that help, comfort, and encouragement comes from God. The God who made heaven and earth, but who knows us all intimately and knows our deepest anguish and our world's deepest anguish. Who reaches for us when we are in the valleys of that pain for which we can find no worth. Who guides our steps and does not let us fall. And that light is Jesus. In our text from the Gospel of John, where we encounter the profound truth that the Word, Jesus Christ, became flesh and dwelt among us. John's words take us to the very heart of God's redemptive plan, the incarnation of Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and that word was with God, and that word was God. This word, who is Jesus, entered into our world, our world of pain and brokenness and suffering, to bring light into the deepest recesses of our darkness. And as John says, that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In the longest night, we find hope. Maybe sometimes just a little bit of hope, a little bit of light. But we find it in the person of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Because the darkness may be overwhelming, but it cannot overcome the light that shines in the darkness. Jesus, our incarnate word, Emmanuel, God with us, comes to dispel the shadows of despair bringing grace, truth, and the promise of eternal life. Our scripture text tonight remind us that God didn't choose to dwell in a distant, unapproachable place. Instead, God chose to dwell among us, intimately sharing in our human experiences, our joys, and our sorrows. And through the Holy Spirit, God continues to be with us, bringing us the light that the darkness cannot put out. Tonight, as we worship together during this longest night, let us embrace that comforting promise in Isaiah and the transformative reality of the incarnation as we heard in the Gospel of John. May we find solace in the Lord of heaven and earth, who is the shade at our right hand. And may the light of Christ lighten our hearts, dispelling the shadows of fear and filling us with the warmth of his love, that love that loves us with a love beyond all human understanding. Amen. Our next hymn, 
is number 151, Lo, How a Rose They're Blooming. We'll be singing verses 1 and 4 as in the order of service. Now we come to a liturgy of candle lighting and remembering. And you'll see it's in your order of service and you may uh, respond where you see appropriate. <clears throat> the first candle we light is to remember those whom we have loved and who no, are no longer here with us. We pause to remember their names, their faces, their voices, the memory that binds them to us in this season. May God's eternal love surround them. The second candle we light is to redeem the pain of everything we have lost this year. Loss of employment, loss of traditions we have held dear, loss of parts of our lives, part of our own selves. We also grieve for the suffering and loss of so many people around the world due to war, violence, persecution, and climate change. We pause to gather up the pain of this year and offer it to God, asking that in return from God's hands we receive the gift of peace. Refresh, restore, renew us, O oh God, and lead us into your future. The third candle we light is to remember ourselves this Christmas time. We pause and remember these past weeks and months, the disbelief, the anger, the down times, the burdens that we have carried, the poignancy of rem reminiscing, all those who stood with us. We give thanks for all the support we have known. Let us remember that dawn defeats darkness, life overcomes death. The fourth candle to light is lit to remember our faith and the gift of hope, which the Christmas story offers to us. We remember that God, who shares our life, promises us a place and time of no, no more pain and suffering.
let us remember the one who shows the way, who brings the truth, and who bears the light. At this time, you are encouraged to silently name a particular need that you would wish to acknowledge to the Lord. Then you're invited to light your candle and place it wherever you would like, before the nativity, on the communion table, or you can remain seated with your candle. As you do, invite the light of Christ to come into your heart, trusting that Christ came into the world to be with us wherever we are. And we'll take some time, some silent time to remember.
invite you now to turn in your order of service to the responsive prayers of the people, which will be followed by the Lord's Prayer. Gracious God, in this season of Advent, we give thanks that you came to be among us. Emmanuel, God with us. You came into the darkness of that time, a time of change and stress, uncertainty and doubt. You did not enter into this world surrounded by grand things. You were born in a stable to parents far from home. O oh God, we pray for your presence here and now in the difficulties of our time. We lay before you our pleas of honesty and need, of worry and hope. For all who are grieving, we pray, O oh Lord, you know what it means to lose someone you dearly love. For all who are lonely, we pray. O oh Lord, you know how it feels to look around and feel that there is no one left. For all who are anxious, we pray. O oh Lord, you know what it is like to be weary and heavy laden. For all who are vulnerable, we pray. O oh Lord, you know what it means to be unhoused and unsafe. For all who are beset by challenges, physical and emotional, we pray. O oh Lord, you know how it feels to be in pain. For all who are longing for light and for hope, we pray. O oh Lord, you know what it is like to wait in the darkness. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you came to be among us full of grace and truth. In you we find our welcome. You are our comfort and our company along the journey of our life. In the name of our nurturing and caring Lord, who taught us to pray together, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now join together in singing hymn number 148. Whenever I sing this hymn, I think that the whoever wrote these lyrics must have felt some of the pain that we all have felt tonight and that our world is feeling right now.
God of comfort and hope, may we leave tonight feeling your presence in a way we have never known, not just as one born in a stable long ago and far away, but as the one born in our hearts, the one who walks beside us, who comforts us on the weary road. Because you have promised to go before us into our brokenness, into hospital rooms, into empty houses, into graveyards, into places of conflict and violence, into our future held by you. And you are here, even now, waiting for each of us to serve us, to hold us, to comfort us, to heal us, to live in us, to bring us peace. And may the grace of the Christ child, the love of God, our heavenly parent, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Again, you are, you are welcome to stay for a time of prayer if you'd like, and uh, please remain seated if you prefer. And thank you for being with us this evening. May God be with you.